So in this video, we want to take a closer look at demand. Uh, specifically, we'll look at uh, aggregate demand, what is aggregate demand, and we'll derive an aggregate demand function. And then we'll look at what is an equilibrium in the goods market. And uh, we'll do that in two steps, both in algebra and in terms of a graph. So let's jump right into it and look at total demand, aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is denoted with the letter Z and aggregate demand is the sum of uh, three components uh, namely consumption, investment and government expenditures government expenditures excuse my handwriting let's talk about each of these in in turn first of all this uh, aggregate demand function that's uh, essentially an expenditure uh, uh, expenditure function but these are the expenditures C consumption are the expenditures of uh, households the private sector consumption is what the private sector consumes uh, investment are the expenditures of firms uh, so we're not talking about financial investment but about physical investment uh, when firms buy assembly lines machinery cars computers and such that is what we mean by investment and third government expenditures are uh, all those expenditures by uh, by the government so Z is total aggregate demand and that can be decomposed here into uh, three components of demand by the sources of demand namely from the private sector from the business sector and from the public sector households firms and the government now you're familiar with the consumption function I'll write it down here C is equal to C0 plus C1 uh, Y minus T or YD so uh, we know that we can replace this C in here with this consumption function what though are I and G and here we'll make a couple of important assumptions we assume that investment is exogenous that's denoted here by the bar over the variable uh, which means that uh, we assume that firms make their investments planned and investment plans and spend accordingly and that only for now as a first approximation we assume that the full amount of investment is exogenous or constant g in turn is of course a policy variable uh, as economists we want to uh, act as advisors to the government uh, principally and think about the right uh, policy, the right fiscal policy here. So uh, part of that would be to think about the right amount of government expenditures. So this is considered exogenous and can then be changed within the model in order to see what happens. So we have defined the three components of demand and we can plug that in uh, into our equation and what we get from it is something like this Z is equal to C0 plus C1 Y minus T plus I bar plus G bar I will not carry the bar all throughout so here you have your aggregate demand function you see that Z is a function of Y uh, that is your aggregate demand function and we can of course uh, graph this as well. I'll go to a new page for that. Uh, so let's write demand continued. I'll write down the aggregate demand function again. Z is equal to C0 plus C1 Y minus T plus I plus G. So we can uh, now graph z as a function of y 
uh, then we have an intercept here these are the exogenous components of demand I will call them A, the autonomous components of demand and then we have a part that varies with income and that uh, is an upward sloping straight line so what are these then specifically uh, what is A for example A is of course equal to C0 minus C1T plus I plus G this is the autonomous autonomous as a oh missing autonomous demand autonomous means that it is independent of income this Y here then uh, the endogenous part of demand is of course C1, C1 times Y so uh, entirely analogous to the consumption function if aggregate income rises by a dollar uh, aggregate demand will rise by uh, a fraction of that C1 okay next step is now to think about an equilibrium equilibrium and we said we're going to do that in terms of algebra and in terms of a graph now let's begin with the algebra what is an equilibrium condition in the goods market the equilibrium condition in the goods market is very intuitively that production is equal to demand we're going to abstract from issues like inventories and of course we're abstracting from exports and imports so we're considering a closed economy so the equilibrium condition here is that production in this economy is equal to demand now what is production production you know is equal to uh, the value of all goods and services produced in an economy in a given year which we know by y which is as well equal to income namely value added the income received by the owners of uh, firms and uh, the like and uh, received by workers uh, this y needs to be equal to demand and we know what demand is namely z so the equilibrium condition in the demand uh, in the goods market is that y is equal to z from our aggregate demand function then we can set z equal to y and write y equal to c0 plus c1 y minus t plus i plus g so here we have a one equation one variable model of the goods market which we can solve out for y you see that we have y on the left hand side y on the right hand side we can solve this out you multiply this out and bring the c1 y term to the left that is uh, and then factor it out 1 minus c1 y equal to c0 plus uh, c0 minus c1 t plus i plus g and that can be solved out by dividing through by 1 over 1 minus c1 times what we already have on the right hand side here plus i plus g and there you have uh, your equilibrium output in the goods market let's think about this expression for a moment first of all you know that c1 is between 0 and 1 which means that 1 over 1 minus c1 is larger than 1 so this term here is what we call the multiplier multiplier absolute crucial uh, component of the determination of uh, of income in the short run 
Uh, second, we have here on the right hand side, uh, let me use a different color, we have this term which we already talked about, that is A, autonomous expenditures. So Y star, meaning equilibrium output, is the product of the multiplier and autonomous demand. To put differently, equilibrium output on the left hand side is equal to a multiple of autonomous expenditures and that multiple is determined by the multiplier which is 1 over 1 minus C1 or 1 over S1, 1 over the marginal propensity to consume. Now, 2, how does that look in a graph? How can we show the equilibrium condition in a graph? Well, we have a graph. That's not pretty. I'll just do it once more. Okay, that's a little bit straighter. We have a graph of uh, the aggregate demand function, which looks a bit like this, which has here a slope of C1 and here autonomous expenditures. Now, how can we bring this equilibrium condition into this graph? Where in the graph is demand equal to income? Well, demand is equal to income everywhere along a line with a slope of 1 or uh, equivalently a, uh, a 45 degree angle. So the slope here is 1 and this is what we call production. Now we have two curves and the two curves intersect and map out one point where we are on the aggregate demand function Z and on the equilibrium condition line Y equal to Z and at this point demand is equal to income and we're on the aggregate demand function so that is our Y star that is equilibrium output or equilibrium income